have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go! Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. And I had this memory come back to me recently. And it was, you know, the olden days of the 1980s when I was a kid. And I remembered, it just came back so strongly. I remember my dad complaining about the thousands of decisions he would make at work every day. He would come home and he, my mother would ask him a question. and He'd say, I don't want to make any decisions. I was making decisions all day at work. And I remember as a kid being like, oh, dad, poor you, you poor guy. I mean, how hard is it to make decisions all day long? Because remember as a kid, you don't get to make any decisions. You're told what to wear. You're told where to stand. You're told to be quiet. You're told when to eat. I thought making decisions was quite a luxury, something I just couldn't wait to do. (laughs) What a fool, right? what I would give now to not have to make decisions. But for my clients and me, it's not the big decisions that are killing us. It's those teeny, tiny, stupid decisions. Things like, you know, what time should we have, do we have to leave for the airport? What should we have for dinner? Which sneakers should I buy my kiddo? You know, those are the exhausting kinds of stupid decisions that really steal our time and our energy. And there's a term for this, it's called decision fatigue. It's basically that wiped out feeling you have because so many things are swimming in your head, you know, the big things and the little things and the things in the middle, and your brain is always trying to remember them. It's not only exhausting, but it creates anxiety and worry and fear and overwhelm in people. Now, we all have big decisions to make. And currently on my mind is, um, you know, how do I want to change my business in 2020? Where do I want to live in 10 years when my son is at college? And how are we going to pay for retirement? Those are the things that, those are big decisions, right? So why do I waste my time with stupid little teeny tiny decisions that don't really matter? Like, does it matter whether, you know, we have, you know, salmon or chicken for dinner? No. So here's an example on how I waste time with these stupid teeny tiny decisions. I, this year I wanted to stop bullshitting myself about my yoga practice and get more serious about it. And yoga has exploded in the town where I live. And back in the day we had like one or two studios, but now we have so many studios to choose from. So we are kind of hashtag blessed, right? But I was totally bullshitting myself about how much time I actually spent doing yoga because what I was really doing was I would be on the mind body app looking at every yoga studio in the area, exploring which class to take at what studio, which time was better with what teacher. I mean, like I seriously spent hours comparing and thinking about, you know, which, which class is the best one and how can I work it into my calendar? And I was totally overthinking it. I'm not exaggerating. Like I would spend hours doing this. I wasted so much time deciding and sorting and ranking and researching that I actually was not going to yoga. I was so tired of thinking about yoga that I couldn't do yoga. Like I was so yogaed out, right? And I know this sounds so stupid, but I bet somewhere in your life, you're actually avoiding doing something by spending too much time thinking about it. This is called buffering, which means you're just avoiding doing the thing. So whether it's, you know, what I was thinking about yoga and I was researching yoga and I was exploring yoga and I was planning yoga, but I was not doing yoga. And so my strategy was to stop the over planning and the overthinking and pick one thing to do and just go with it and see how it works out. Because remember, it's all just an experiment. So we cannot know the perfect solution. 
And what I'm going to share with you is something you'll likely resist because you're going to tell yourself, no, 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 I need all the options. And I'm going to say, no, you don't need all the options. All the options are absolutely paralyzing. And actually a study was done about this regarding jam, I think. And they, had, they did a study on a grocery store that had like hundreds of options for jam, like an entire section of jams. And if you went in to buy jam, you would likely come out with no jam because there was just too many choices for you. So having so many options are absolutely paralyzing. And if you had only like six jams to choose from versus a hundred, you're just much more likely to make a decision. I know that sounds really crazy, but it's true. And this is called constraining. And constraining is actually how I solved my yoga problem. I committed to the studio where I felt the most comfortable. That was the most convenient to my home. So I made my constraints. I bought a year unlimited pass and that was it. And frankly, that kind of constraining will save you time and energy and help you have more time to do other things that you really want to do. So if you're tired of making thousands of decisions a day, decisions that feel important but like actually aren't, decisions that keep you from taking action, that's decision fatigue. So how do you, de- how do you deal with this? How do you make it stop? Well, as usual, I suggest not overhauling your life. Choose one area that you feel like you're in decision fatigue. And that could be like what to wear, what's in your closet, right? Or what to eat, which exercise to do, uh, which web hosting software to use, for example, or even which books to read. These little decisions keep us stuck in a loop. They create anxiety and worry and exhaustion. And so how do we do this? How do we constrain? Well, again, decide one aspect of your life that's currently depleting you. And again, go for the low-hanging fruit. Use the, the, the low-risk thing, okay? Don't make this too hard. And then number step two is you simplify and take action. Just make a choice. Choose between two things. Stop overthinking it. Step three is then assess. Is this good? Is life better? Are things the same? Do I have more energy? Where are you winning here? And then the fourth, piece, the fourth piece is, is life worse? Because if it's not working for you, then guess what? You get to make a different choice. None of this is easy and that's okay because making a choice isn't perfect. That's okay. We gain confidence not by doing things perfectly, but by trying something different and knowing that we can handle whatever the outcome is. I promise you can do this. Micro shifts yield macro results. So where's a place in your life where you spend too much time and energy figuring things out? Maybe it's meal planning or deciding which of the 10 books on your nightstand to read or which business model is best for you or which training to get the certification that you want. It could be anywhere, but I promise more choices does not mean more. More usually steals our time and energy. So during this season, I'd love for you to think about how you can constrain your decisions and watch how much more time and energy you actually have to do the thing you need to do. I hope this has been helpful for you. And I would love to hear where you've decided to scale back on making decisions. You can always reach out to me. Find me on the socials. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. And you can DM me there or send me a private message. And I'd love to know what your, what your thoughts are on this. Thanks for showing up. and. If you are celebrating Christmas, I wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas, and I will see you next week as we are about to roll into 2020. See you then. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week. And remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.